In this video, we are going to discuss about an oral pathology topic, pyogenic granuloma, which is a quite common entity encountered in clinical practice. Pyogenic granuloma represents an exuberant connective tissue proliferation to a known stimulus or injury. Over the years, it has been termed by various names such as granuloma, pediculatum, benigium, vascular epulis, and Crocker and Hadzel's disease. The present name was given by Crocker in 1903. The term pyogenic granuloma or granuloma pyogenicum was stated by Hadzel in 1904. The term pyogenic granuloma or granuloma pyogenicum is a misnomer in that it is not pus producing and it does not represent granulomatous inflammation. Though being a misnomer, it is a quite frequently used term still today. Pyogenic granuloma was originally believed to be a botrymycotic infection. Botrymycosis is a chronic bacterial infection which manifests clinically as tumors or plaques which drain small white colored granules similar to a mycetoma. It was thought that this botrymycotic infection was transmitted from horses to men. Subsequent work suggested that the lesion was due to infection by other staphylococci or streptococci. It is now generally agreed, however, that pyogenic granuloma arises as a result of some minor trauma to the tissues, which provides a pathway for the invasion of non-specific types of microorganisms. The tissues respond in a characteristic manner to these organisms of low virulence by the overzealous proliferation of a vascular type of connective tissue. Various etiologic factors have been proposed where patients dispensed with these findings. This tissue response retaliates the well-known biologic principle that any irritant applied to living tissue may act either as a stimulus or as a destructive agent or as both. Poor oral hygiene, which leads to the development of plague and calculus, is believed to be the most common etiologic factor. A foreign material can get stuck between the teeth, impinging onto the soft tissues and can predispose to the formation of pyogenic granuloma. A history of trauma before the development of the lesion is not unusual, especially for extragingival pyogenic granulomas. Gingival irritation and inflammation that result from poor oral hygiene may be a precipitating factor in many patients. A faulty filling and overhanging restoration. Food impaction in the interdental region. Increased amount of progesterone and estrogen produced during pregnancy. Drugs such as oral contraceptives, retinoids, zefitinib, and MEK inhibitors, to name a few. Trauma caused due to overzealous brushing of teeth harming the oral soft tissues. Chronic irritation related with exfoliation of deciduous teeth. Eruption of permanent teeth. Moving on to clinical features of pyogenic granuloma. The color of the surface of the lesion ranges from pink to red to purple depending on the age of the lesion. Young pyogenic granulomas are highly vascular in appearance. Older lesions tend to become more collagenized and pink. Their size varies from small growths, only a few millimeters in size, to larger lesions that may measure several centimeters in diameter. The lesion may be present unilaterally or sometimes exhibit a bilateral presentation. Typically, the mass is painless, although it often bleeds easily because of its extreme vascularity, thus having a tendency for hemorrhage either spontaneously or even upon slight trauma. Occasionally, they may become ulcerated because of secondary trauma. The ulcerated lesions may then become covered by a yellow fibrinous membrane. The lesion is usually an elevated, pedunculated or sessile vascular mass 
with a smooth lobulated or even a warty surface. Oral pyogenic granulomas show a striking predilection for the gingiva, which accounts for 75% of all cases. Lesions are slightly more common on the maxillary gingiva than the mandibular gingiva. Anterior regions are more frequently affected than posterior areas. These lesions are much more common on the facial aspect of the gingiva than the lingual aspect. Some extend between the teeth and involve both the facial and the lingual gingiva. The lips, tongue and buccal mucosa are the next most common sites. Although the pyogenic granuloma can develop at any age, it is most common in children and young adults. Most studies also demonstrate a definite female predilection, possibly because of the vascular effects of female hormones, estrogen and progesterone. So we just saw that pyogenic granuloma is quite common in pregnancy because of the increased concentration of female hormones in the body. Pregnancy tumor is histologically identical to, pi to pyogenic granuloma of the gingiva frequently occurring during pregnancy and often has been called the pregnancy tumor. It is also termed as granuloma gravidarum. It occurs as a well-defined lesion which appears about the third month of pregnancy or sometimes later. Its incidence increases through seventh month it gradually increases in size and after delivery it may or may not regress. It is now commonly believed that pregnancy tumor is simply a pyogenic granuloma which occurs as a result of local minor trauma or irritation and in which the tissue reaction is probably intensified by the endocrine alteration occurring during pregnancy. That is the increase in the levels of estrogen and progesterone. It is believed that after pregnancy and it has been reported that after pregnancy and the return of normal hormone levels, some of these pyogenic granulomas resolve without treatment or undergo fibrous maturation and resemble a fibroma. So in this image you can see the first image there is a large gingival mass in a pregnant woman just before childbirth and in the second image the mass has decreased in size and undergone fibrous maturation three months after childbirth. Next, looking at the histological features of pyogenic granuloma. The histologic appearance of the pyogenic granuloma is similar to that of granulation tissue, except it is exuberant and is usually well localized. The overlying epithelium, if present, is generally thin and atrophic, but may be hyperplastic. Below that, the connective tissue stroma is quite delicate and is composed of lobular masses of hyperplastic granulation tissue. These vessels sometimes are organized in lobular aggregates and some pathologists require this lobular arrangement for the diagnosis of lobular capillary hemangioma. The most startling features are the occurrence of numerous small and large endothelium lined channels that are engorged with red blood cells. In addition, there is usually a moderately intense infiltration of polymorphonuclear leukocytes, lymphocytes and plasma cells, but this finding will vary depending upon the presence or absence of ulceration. The connective tissue stroma is typically delicate, although frequently fasciculi of collagen fibers are noted coursing through the tissue mass. The extreme proliferation of fibroblast and budding endothelial cells. The development of pyogenic granuloma can be classified into three phases. First, the cellular phase, wherein there is an increase in the inflammatory cells. Second phase is the capillary phase or vascular phase, characterized by overzealous budding of endothelial cells. And the last phase is the involutionary phase, wherein the lesion begins to regress, thus resembling a fibroma. Differential diagnosis. Clinically, this lesion is similar to peripheral giant cell granuloma, which also presents as a red gingival mass. 
histologically you can identify the difference as in pgcg you will definitely see giant cells which are not seen in pyogenic granuloma a peripheral odontogenic or ossifying fibroma may be another consideration although these tend to be much lighter in color rarely metastatic cancer may present as a red gingival mass but in most of the cases the metastatic cancerous lesion ulcerates biopsy findings are definitive in establishing the diagnosis and finally the treatment of pyogenic granuloma pyogenic granuloma should be conservatively surgically excised which includes the connective tissue from which the lesion arises as well as removal of local etiological factors such as plaque calculus foreign materials source of trauma if the source of trauma is left then it could lead to recurrence of the lesion and according to some studies the recurrence rate has been reported as 15.8% Other methods can also be used for removing the lesion such as diode lasers of wavelength between 808 to 980 nanometer. So this was about pyogenic granuloma. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.